All right, we're back. Uh, Morse Code Podcast, Dan Morse, Sophie Priya, Cambodian Prince. How are you? That's me, and I am doing well. Scale of 1 to 10. Be honest. It is Tuesday, and boy, was I swamped in the swamp. swamps. <laughs> um, yeah. I, I give it a 7.4. So good. So you're doing Not good. Great. Not great. We'll get yeah. to there. Um, I'm doing good. I mean, we're back. Like I said, episode 33. Three, the Larry Bird mm-hmm. episode. Holy shit! We should have had fuck. We didn't have Larry Bird on tonight. I know. Eh, we kind of do. Yeah, <laughs> there he is. Um, no. Before we get into it, we did have um, really good conversation tonight with uh, Jonas Knox from Fox Sports Radio. Uh, I've been following this guy for quite some time. Um, I think he's phenomenal. Uh, great Twitter follow. He's on all sorts of different shows on Fox. You know, once you get into the interview, he'll he'll kind of run you through where you can find him. But um, before we get into that, I want to make sure we touch on everything that we need to touch on as your hosts. Um, so I'm mm-hmm. trying to think. Since we last spoke, when did we last speak? We had Drapes on. Yep. That was good shit. Great guy. And now we're Drapes guys. We are Drapes guys, for sure. Um, I was, I, I, I'd consider myself a Drapes guy, but now we're officially you know, appointed as official Drapes guys, verified. Yes, we guys. are respected yeah. leadership within the uh, Draper cabinet. It's kind of a big deal. Um, what else? So what else is going on? Oh, I should address this before we go anywhere. A lot has been circulating across the news today. Um, kind of an elephant in the room type of scenario. I we were going to save this. Oh, we were going to save this for the uh, paid subscribers. But no? No, no. No, I'm, this, is, this is free. Um, this is free. And shout out whoever it was who commented in our last YouTube video saying these guys don't even get <laughs> don't even get into the interview till 10 minutes. Hope you're watching this one and can give us another free timestamp. Cause I actually was pretty dope. That helped out a lot. <laughs> Seemed pissed, but it does help. <laughs> yeah. So shout out that guy. Um I know actually, him his name. name was Larry. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Larry. Uh, uh, we probably shouldn't out him on this in case nah. someone sees it. It was it was Lawrence, uh, but we'll call him Larry. Yeah. Shout I out assume Larry. he was not a bird. Mm-mm. Mm. Last Although name that was, or... That was bird. kind of chicken shit. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but no, we saw... I saw today uh, Deion Sanders, primetime, as some people know him, like me, announced what, he's not coming back to NFL Network or he's just leaving NFL Network or same thing pretty much? Yeah, basically his contract was up, um, but he didn't like negotiate to try to come back or extend it or anything. He just was out. So he's had some strong opinions I saw recently on the NFL coming back. Have you seen that? You know what I'm talking about? Um, oh, I thought that that was about that was about the NFL. That wasn't about college. Might have been about either. Theory still holds, basically yeah. saying, like, you know, no one's bigger than the game. The game's going to go on, blah, 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 which is true. But mm-hmm. I think it was taken in kind of a derogatory sense. Like, uh, I don't know how to paraphrase this. Like, you're basically a pussy Like, <laughs> if you're opting out of the season. That's how E-bap. I interpreted it. <laughs> For sure. Um, but like I said, I just want to get this out there because I'm sick of, like, responding to all the individual DMs we're getting. He's not necessarily leaving NFL Network to join the Morse Code podcast full time. I'm I'm not. How can I be more clear about this? I am not publicly saying that. I'm also not saying that he's not coming on the Morse Code podcast full time. Legally, I cannot not say anything about what he's not or actually doing with his career. That, right. That's about as simple and easy to explain it as I can. Yeah, um, we got to be careful with our words. We are. I think I was very careful with my words. Super careful. Um, we'll just remain neutral on what he is or is not doing because he could be and could not be doing many things. If we're if we're gonna get into the nitty gritty, which one of which a lot could of people be, have asked, one of which could be joining our show full time. Yes, or it couldn't be. Yes. Uh, <laughs> both of those things are definitely on the table boy could it be so we'll have to see like anything it's a it's a negotiation process people don't understand there's still a business side to this thing um speaking of business sides 
the show doesn't pay for itself. We got to keep the lights on somehow. So let, let's get no. right into our ad read. So if you're listening today, um, today's show is uh, brought to you by uh, Brian Leahy's belated birthday. Next time you're online looking to buy a birthday, whether current or belated, uh, just use product code Brian Leahy birthday belated 2020 to get 50% off your order. Again, I'm just reading the ad. I have no idea what that even means. Um, but we, we just got to make sure we get out there. So happy belated birthday to Brian Leahy. His birthday was last week, hence belated. Um, everyone knows him, of course, as our super executive producer, our stat guy, our researcher. What else is he technically on payroll for? Our mascot? biggest critic. <sighs> Sir, I don't pay him to do that shit. He's no. certainly, he's ironically our biggest critic and biggest supporter all at the same time. Mm hmm. Um, don't know how that one works either. Um, but anyway, show's brought to you today by, by Brian Leahy's belated birthday code word. Um, I already forget. I think it was belated birthday, Brian, to get 50% off your next order. Um, also if you take a picture with your order and tag the Morse code pod Instagram handle, you'll get another 50% off, I think. Yeah, yeah. Basically, if you do this right, we end. They end up paying you. We're paying for your birthday if you, mm -hmm. if you do this right and tag all the appropriate handles. So somehow you get a birthday and money. Um, just just do the math right. That sounds like a hell of a birthday. I would take that. Uh, I would take that. You get a, a birthday year. and money? once a year, every year. Yeah, preferably same, same day. day every year. Oh God, talk <laughs> That's about my kind of birthday. <laughs> <laughs> talk about stars aligning. Yeah. Oh man. Speaking of stars aligning, um, on a serious note, on an actual serious note, quick shout out, as usual, to some of our listeners and followers. Um, we are getting a lot more traction on the YouTube channel, which is cool. Like we lose really getting some comments, getting some actual messages. It's cool interacting with people on Twitter and stuff like that. I think it's going to be a lot of fun once. I know NBA is back, but it's not really back to the playoff start. So we have hoops playoff starting. Hockey playoff starting, NFL's coming back, baseball is what it is, college football, who the hell knows. Um, but looking to continue interacting with you guys, keep, you know, keep interacting with us. It's fun. You know, comment on the photo, share, create, mm -hmm. start conversations. Um, obviously, all our guests who have been on before, if you're still listening, more than appreciated. You guys are a hell of a lot busier than us. Um, so it, it, it's cool to finally get some um get some other people on the show outside of just listening to, to Sophie and I go back and forth for an hour. So uh, a lot of cool things happening, but much appreciated to everyone who's been, um, been rocking with us so far. Yeah. Check out the, um, the Twitter profile, which is recently up and running. Oh shit! Uh, same profile. handle as the, the Instagram follow our Instagram account at the Morse code pod. And uh, yeah, uh, just give everyone a, a little, little look uh dan has done a tremendous job running the instagram account um mm. getting that to um a bunch of followers i think we're into Four the millions, millions. and millions, millions or trillions it's not, we're not in a trillion yet trillion with a t oh, damn it one day no one that's day. <laughs> that's why i look at that motivational poster that you were talking about earlier every every morning i get up is to get to a trilly um but no uh so he does that um i'll oh, be for the Trill most Withers. part yeah, shout out Trill Withers. That's that's like our idol. I kind of speak for myself and you. So mm -hmm. yeah. But no, um, I'll be running for the most part the Twitter account. So check that out. Um, don't make me look bad. Otherwise I will get pissed and just run this show into the ground um and tweet out some crazy shit. But no, um cool, cool, cool. It has <laughs> it has been a lot of fun lately. Like mm. people I don't think people would believe like how busy we've been um doing yeah, this weeks, and weeks. how you and i are talking 24 7 about ideas and and people to talk to so it's been a good time and yeah. uh appreciate everyone listening yeah let's um let's do this let's get right into the interview um so again jonas knox from fox sports radio what do we talk about we talk about he talks a little bit about kind of you know like i said his roles with fox sports radio Mm -hmm. he's got like a lot of these people in sports media man it's it's a crazy journey these guys take you know he talks about going from working like three or four jobs on the same day just to get a shot at a producer job to finally get on the radio he does his own gambling show we talk a little gambling um 
waking up what at else? crazy hours of the night for Seriously. like the certain jobs he's had. Yeah. Um, his, some of his fandom, he's an interesting, interesting spectrum of fandom. I think he's like Bears, Cubs, Celtics. Uh, I think he said South Carolina football. Um, <laughs> so I'm always interested in hearing those people who have different, different teams they follow, kind of how those came to be. So they have some cool stories there. And then he, he, he lives in an L.A. area. Um, we talked a little Kobe. Ended it talking a little bit of Kobe, kind of going back to that tragic day back uh, earlier in the year. And kind of crazy, man, ironically, I guess. He, he mentions he lived like within miles mm-hmm. of, uh, of where the crash happened and everything. So kind of cool to get a, a, a local's perspective on that whole thing as well. And damn, that's just, just still sad to talk about. It's fucking yeah. crazy. Like he I remember- said, it was like six, five or six months ago. It seems like five years ago. That was like the first two or three days after that happened was like, that was someone that I knew. And then even 100%. for weeks after that, I was just like, damn, like things just don't feel the same because Kobe, a guy who I've never met and plays nope. basketball, like who would 3000 miles rip, away, rip our heart out of our chest as like yep. a Celtics fan. Mm-hmm. Like I literally remember watching games being, I fucking hate this guy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then after that, like it all comes back to like, this guy's phenomenal, but yeah, crazy. It, we didn't really talk about this on the interview, but one thing I wanted to say was it, it was one of those ones where I'm reliving. It, it, it's definitely one of those scenarios where you remember where you were when it happened. Mm-hmm. If, if, I guess if you're a sports fan. Um, it's one of those things where it's a Twitter age where it's like there's so much bullshit and like hoaxing and trolls on Twitter. I saw it from a not very professional account. It was like it wasn't like a 12 year old kid, but it wasn't like woes or something. And it was like, report Kobe Bryant died in a helicopter crash. And I was like, yo, that's fucked up. Like, A, this is super random to just joke about literally out of the blue. Mm-hmm. Um, but again, I'm like, all right, that's, that's weird. It's a weird thing to joke about, whatever. And then it's like, the tweets that made it real were like, guys like, and not him specifically, but guys like Stephen A. Smith or like a moderate, like basketball guys, not tweeting the news, but tweeting like, in essence, like, this might be real. Like, oh shit, like there's, mm-hmm. this isn't a joke. And then, and then it comes out to be formal. It's on the news. And it's just like, you're right. It's not sad in the sense, well, it's sad, but it's not in the sense that it's like, you know, you have a, a relative die or something, but it's just one of those ones where it's like, just, I remember dude, just seeing the words like Kobe Bryant dead was so like, sur- like it was, it was like literally the last thing I would expect to happen like on that Sunday morning, like just so crazy, like how that turned to, turned to be in a yeah. relatively short amount of time. Yeah. I remember it came through it around came like up. one or two in the afternoon. I was watching mm-hmm. the golf tournament because mm-hmm. I think it was like the Genesis Invitational or something like that, but it was one of the, the big tournaments that Tiger plays in every year. That's not a major. Mm-hmm. And so they announced it like across the bottom on a ticker or something like that, that the mm-hmm. report had come out. And then, the rest of the day, you know, I was just refreshing Twitter. And every time you refreshed it, it was like most of the time you see that button that shows like the three icons of yeah, yeah. accounts yep. you follow that have like recent news. And every uh-huh. time I hit that button, it would scroll so far with just yep. people, you know, RIP. I can't believe mm-hmm. this is happening. And then just the rest of the day when I was watching that um, golf tournament, it was, it was even weird watching that because the announcers in a completely different sport were – were oh, completely yeah. surprised by it. And then um, later that night, the Celtics played at six. They played against the Pelicans. I can still remember it. Really? And I don't remember that. Yeah. Damn, I forgot the NBA was even playing. That's right. Yep. Jesus Christ. And obviously, um, that's when every team started doing the 24-second the yeah, yeah, violation yeah, yeah. At, at, yeah, yeah. right after tip-off. So yeah, it was crazy. It was um, definitely feels like years ago, like you guys were saying. It, it it does, but now I think too to the actual day. Remember, it wasn't just Kobe Bryant dead. It was like helicopter crash that Kobe Bryant we think was on, and then it just got layered and layered. It's like okay, his daughter might have been on it, his whole mm-hmm. family might have been on it. It's just like, geez, like one thing after another. It's like you've got to be shitting me, because first was Kobe. Then I'm pretty sure it was a small period of time. It got it got um kind of you know rectified pretty shortly. But there was a short period of time when tweets were coming out that he was with like multiple family members. Like, yeah, and then somehow Rick Fox wife. people thought was on it 
Yeah. Yeah. And he had yep, to tweet and be like, no, I'm good. No, I'm good. <laughs> RIP Kobe, but I'm, I'm, I'm good. Rick's here. Um, and then, yeah, then like the stuff with Gigi and it just like, it, it's terrible. But that whole week, cause it's like some guys were a little more out front about coming on TV and talking about it and stuff. Like they had a special that night and I think it was Jerry West went on and totally broke down. Um, but then mm. it, there were some guys delayed. Like I remember maybe it wasn't too delayed, but I'm pretty sure like the TNT crew were a few were days after, like when yeah, Shaq had his big thing. It's just like, it was, it just touched so many people. Like, mm -hmm. it's just crazy. Very crazy. Like I'm trying to think of an athlete, definitely not an athlete. I can't think of an athlete that had a similar dying young tragically, but on the same, you know, graph as like popularity and talent level. Yeah. Like, there's arguments to the top five basketball player of all time. Mm -hmm. I can't think of an athlete. Can you? No. In our, our lifetime? I feel like for the most part, um, the only one other one I really heard was maybe like Steve McNair tragedy. Yes. But he was, you know, he wasn't Kobe Bryant, like from right. like a, a recognition standpoint. Yeah. Uh, athlete wise, I don't think anyone comes close. I mean, like I said, if you consider him a top five player in the NBA, there's only, there's only four other options that could be more, <laughs> you know right. what I mean? Like more higher on that list. Um, yeah, I, I say athlete. He he's got to be the biggest one to uh, have a tragic ending like that. Mm -hmm. Even like just his funeral at Staples, not his funeral, whatever you want to call that thing at Staples, is fucking nuts. Yeah, that was like a that was insane. Pre Corona, obviously. Yeah, um, but that was just that was like right before the peak of everything. We should have asked Jonas. I wonder how that would be different if this happened in like July. It would just be like one more crazy ass. Fucking oh my god! Thing, like sprinkled into all this stuff. I remember yeah, back then that was the, okay. That was the first thing that the meme started coming around. Like, you know, everyone like happy about 2020 and then like, Oh, like this is going to be a pretty bad year. Kobe died. What else could happen? Like, mm -hmm. well, <laughs> just <laughs> buckle up. <laughs> well, so the, the game where they honored him and this will tell you how, like how close it was to Corona mm -hmm. starting the game where they honored him was um, February 24th, obviously two for Gigi and 24 yeah, for yeah. Kobe. Right. And, coronavirus i remember when i started working from home was mid-march a few yep. a few a few weeks later so this year mm. sucked yeah big suck i would hoover it, suck I, w I wouldn't put it in my top five greatest years of my life <laughs> no big borderline uh, bottom five big bagless dyson suck <laughs> <laughs> so let, let's do this let's let's do what we meant to do about 10 minutes ago Mm -hmm. And uh, we'll get into the Jonas Knox interview. So enjoy the interview and uh, we'll talk to you guys soon. Peace. Peace out. All right, cool. Welcome back. Uh, Morse Code Podcast, Dan Morse, Sophie Priyup, of course. Uh, we are joined today by the Jonas Knox from Fox Sports Radio. Uh, Jonas, what's up, man? How are you? Thanks for hopping on. What's up, guys? Thanks very much for having me. I appreciate it. It's an honor to be on with you guys. Wow, it's probably that's the nice first time anyone said that. Well, I'm a said nobody, that. man. So anybody, if anybody ever asks oh, me to like, do us. an interview, like I, I'm yeah. always, I, I'm always more than more than happy to try and do it if I can, just because I know, I mean, mm -hmm. there's no difference between me and you guys. We're all just hanging out. We're watching sports. Big deal. That's the way I look at it. Love it. I'll take that yeah. as a hell of a compliment. Um, <laughs> but so, so before we, we get too into it, just in case there is anyone who's listening who might not uh, follow you now or, or you know, listen to you on Fox, what's, uh, what's the best place people can find you right now? I know you do your weekend show with Brady Quinn, and then you're kind of operating on a few other shows as well sometimes, right? Yeah, so I work every day. Um, yeah. And it, it's, it's a little weird, and it was a little weird at first, but it's just something I've gotten used to. So I work every day. Uh, I do a show during the week with – um, RJ Bell and Steve Fezzik and the guys for straight out of Vegas. It's an oh, hour long, right. uh, yep. to talk about uh, the gambling stuff, but then I do my, my shows. I have my solo show, um, on weekends, uh, Pacific time, Friday night, 11 PM to 3 AM. Mm -hmm. And then I do a show quick turnaround with Bucky Brooks on Saturdays. And then I do the show with uh, what's his name on Sunday nights. So yeah, <laughs> there's that. Nice. There's that. And then, but, I mean, one of my personal favorites is, um, when you and um, John Ramos and Byron, those guys hop on for like Doug Gottlieb and stuff like that. Oh yeah. That's, yeah. that's some, some rare gold whenever we get, we get lucky enough to see that, but, but no, I mean, yeah, I remember, 
Go, go ahead. I was, oh, was, was going to say, no, that, that's, that's always a fun one because I've worked <laughs> with, I mean, I, like Dan and I worked on when I was just a, a, a part-time producer for our national morning show. And so Dan and I um, just became buddies because he was doing the, the morning show. So he was doing the yep. updates on the morning show. And then I knew John because obviously we would, we worked together on that show. And then, yeah you know, there was a change in programming and then they took over, but we were always asked like, Hey, do you guys want to fill in if we ever do it? So we just instantly have a good chemistry mm -hmm. and I'm always really um, careful with that show because those guys have put in so much time as far as in that time slot. I mean, I was there mm -hmm. for a short time and then I left that I always want to do exactly the show they want to do. And I always want to yep. be respectful of, of Dan and John because they they're there every day. So, mm -hmm. but it's a lot of fun to get to hang out. I always thank them for, for letting me do it when I do. So, yeah, I, I think I remember I first started listening to you probably we just alluded to on the morning show. Are you referring to when like Mike North and Andy Furman, like the Fox yeah, sports yeah, morning show? There was, but, but even was it goes, great. yeah, it goes way before that one. Oh, okay. I mean, there, there was a show called Zach and Jack with uh, Jack Trudeau, former NFL quarterback, and Dominic mm -hmm. Zaccanini back in the day. Um, worked on that show. Both those guys are, are awesome guys. Um, got Did that show and then left that show for a while, and I bounced around. I was on the Ben Maller show for a little bit. Um, yep. Then Andy Furman and Artrell Hawkins took over the morning show, so then um, I, I was on that show. And then when Artrell left – Mike North got the call to be on with Andy and that was just, that was bananas. <laughs> I mean, like some of the stuff, yeah. like the, the show was fun and those guys had great chemistry because mm -hmm. those guys are two of the, uh, the best to ever do it. Mm -hmm. But the stuff during the breaks, because they're, you know, mm -hmm. Andy's in Kentucky in his basement in Kentucky screaming his lungs out. Yeah. Uh, Mike's <laughs> Mike's at his home studio in Chicago. And then it's me and the late great, Frank Pollock in the studio in Sherman Oaks, California. And then you got Eddie Garcia, who's also on updates. Yep. And so we would, during the break, we would be communicating back and forth with them. And it was just I, like, and Mike Norris says to this day, so I've never laughed that much since doing yeah. that show. Some of the stuff behind the scenes, like the shenanigans and all I get that. And you kind of develop this bond with people especially with frank because frank was such a good dude mm -hmm. um but such a smart ass and so him and i immediately got to got along well and he was an older guy and he loved to fish and he was a longtime laker producer and and he just had this real ornery kind of way about him and had just the worst diet in the world but like never put on weight it was really weird mm -hmm. and like, he would just eat crap and then we would, uh, you sort of develop this, well, we're both waking up at ungodly hours. I was waking up at midnight during the week. I would go to the gym and then I would cruise in straight from the gym and then do a show work. And for a lot of the time I was doing that. And then I would go and work another job part-time and I would sleep in the parking lot of that other job because it was like telemarketing. And I would sleep in my car in the parking lot there, try and get a couple hours because I was going to go on two or three hours sleep. I'd mm -hmm. work that job. And then um, there were times to where for a short time I was doing that, working in the morning, going to that, that, that second job. And then I would come mm -hmm. back and I would do security at my brother's bar until like three in the morning or two in the morning. So it was crazy, crazy. man. <laughs> yeah, it was, but that's, that's the way it is. You know, you got to pay that. your dues. Yeah, yep. Everybody's got to do that. So one of my favorite segments from that morning show was bottom barrel betting as well. Yeah. Going into the weekend. Yeah. Lost a lot that of was... money following bottom barrel betting, but uh... it, let me tell you something, man, <laughs> that like, I, I don't, I don't take credit for a lot. I will take full credit for that. That was my nice. idea. And Mike North is a degenerate gambler. Yep. <laughs> and Andy, Andy, Andy doesn't know anything. He just wants to have fun. So I, yep. I, I told him, I said, you know, why don't we, I forget how it got brought up and, and I just said, look, if you actually look closely, there are all sorts of stuff that you can bet on. And, mm -hmm. and what's weird is that through the process of finding all of these different sports to bet on, somehow I became familiar with like the New Delhi Daredevils yeah. were, uh, were an Indian, they were an Indian Premier League cricket team 
<laughs> that I didn't even know. Like, I didn't right. even know how cricket works. Yeah. And we just started doing it. And, and I think, I think we were doing it every day mm-hmm. and it just became so much fun. And I know they, they, they still do it on the weekends. Oh, okay. Um, and, and yeah, it, it, but that, that was, that was pretty cool because, you know, you think that of, of gambling is just, well, you know, I mean, people bet on the NFL, people bet right. on college football, people bet on the NBA, yeah. but man, m- money's the same everywhere. So if you got a hundred yeah. bucks on, on, you know, the Portland trailblazers, there's no difference between that and having a hundred bucks on the new Delhi daredevils. And right. it's a real thing. And people do gamble on it, soccer, all sorts of stuff. So yeah, it was wild, man. Yeah. That was, was funny. Back then. Yeah. Um, I've, I've heard this before too, from like, you know, not degenerate gamblers, but people who gamble and you just said it, like most people, new gamblers, they gamble on the Super Bowl or the big Sunday night game or whatever. But it's like the beauty of, of like betting on sports is every game's a Super Bowl. You know what I mean? Like every yeah. game is the biggest game at that mm-hmm. moment, yep. you know, yep. a mid season, I don't know, fucking Texas Rangers and Tampa Bay Rays yeah. baseball game. If you have $500 on it, that's a pretty, that's, that's a big game. <laughs> like you're, yeah, you're glued it, to the TV watching that it, game. Look, that's, that's your money, man. And <laughs> I, I, I can remember because, you know, I, I got into gambling. I mean, this was well before I was ever in sports radio and yeah. I, you know, I was betting on games, but I've never been like a degenerate. I never right, right, right. You know, would, would chase bets and bet a bunch of money because I didn't have a bunch mm-hmm. of money, but I can remember mm-hmm. the one game to this day that made me stop ever making a big bet again. And it was, I think it was LeBron's first or second year and it was the Cavs and the magic. And I was a, a bar back slash bus boy at TGI Fridays. Mm. And I remember this because I, I did a two team parlay and the way that it works is you've got to have both bets hit mm. in order to win. But if both bets hit, it pays out better. So for mm. example, if you, if you made one bet, uh, for a hundred dollars, it would pay out a hundred bucks. If you made another bet for a hundred dollars, it would pay out a hundred bucks. If both those hit, you would win two hundred dollars. But if only one hits, you you still win the one. Right. Well, the way a parlay works is that if they both don't hit, you're not winning anything. But if they do, you make more. And I think it was I think it was two sixty. I I think that's what it was. I think it was a hundred bucks to to win two sixty, if I'm not mistaken. Mm-hmm. And so I put in, I did this hundred dollar bet. I'm a bus boy at Friday. I don't have that kind of money to throw around, but I was an idiot. It was, it was a Friday night and the mm. bet was, Where else would you rather be? Yeah, it's crazy. I, that, the, <laughs> the, I can tell you stories about that place. Have you, too. Have you heard that one um, before? <laughs> yeah. I just, <laughs> that place. Um, but I bet, so the bet was, um, God, what was it? it was magic. I, or I think it was the magic minus two and a half. Mm-hmm. And the over under was two Oh one. I think, I think it was what it was. So I'm like, okay, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to bet. I like the Cavs plus the two and a half. It was on the road and I'm going to bet the under. And I thought, you know, I just, you know, I'll I'll take that bet. Well, the game wasn't on TV. So I kept getting Mm. updates and it was low scoring the whole way through. And I felt great about it. And then the fourth quarter hit and all of a sudden these team, like they start putting up these points and so I'm stressing out. So I'm walking around with a bus tub, some napkins, and a spray bottle. And I look like uh, like I, I lost like a, a 10 pounds of Coke, and I don't know where it is. And I'm, sur- I'm, like, I'm pacing up and down. You're busting the shit out of that place. Uh, I just like – I don't even know what I – I don't even remember a single thing about that night except for what happened at the end. So I, it gets down to the wire. The score is 100. The Cavs are up 100 to 97. Mm-hmm. So I'm good on my plus two and a half because the mm-hmm. Cavs at this point, I've got basically a five point cushion, but the over under was at 200 or 201 or something mm-hmm. like that. So the magic had the ball. It was the final possession. Tracy McGrady throws up a three at the buzzer and he misses and they call a foul. Jesus and he, Christ. He, he goes to the line with like no time left and hits all three free throws and they go into overtime and I lose my bet because wow. it That's was guaranteed. One. It was guaranteed they were going to hit the over because it was tied at a hundred and the yeah, over yeah. under was at 200 and a half or 201. And I just remember the air leaving my body. Like I just remember thinking to myself, okay, so I'm, I went from thinking I had $260, which is a lot of money and I needed it to, 
I'm now going to be working for free tonight yeah. and probably tomorrow night or whenever the next shift was. So yeah, that was brutal. But that's why I just don't, I'll do five bucks here. I'll do 10 yeah, yeah. bucks there, but I never, never go heavy just because I want it to be enjoyable. I don't want it. I right. don't want to have to depend on it. I want it to be enjoyable. And unless I can sit down and have, have a drink and, and, and look at it, like I'll never bet on a game when I'm working. Cause I just feel like, you mm-hmm. know, it would be like if I'm betting on uh, a fighter in a boxing match and then I'm scoring the fight from home, <laughs> of course, I'm, I'm, I'm going to give every swing right. round to that guy, to, to the guy of the money on. That's just the way this works psychologically. Mm-hmm. So, so yeah, it was, it's crazy, but it, look, man, it's, it's changed our business and fantasy football oh, yeah. and all the other things that go along with it. So as much so as uh, you go ahead. So I was just going to say as much as we all would love to bet as, as uh, you know, whenever we want, it's not like you're Mr. Unlimited. Oh, no kidding. <laughs> I mean, yeah. yeah I, I uh, what the hell was with that video? That was I don't even... out there. For, for um, an already I... guy who's out there, that was a strange video. But I, I was going to say, is it safe to say you hate Tracy McGrady? You have to. No, no, I don't. Because I, wow. I know how you guys made up works. eventually. Yeah, yeah. Because mm-hmm. I, I know I, I wasn't, I wasn't mad at, at him. I, I don't, I don't even. I think I was so devastated that I didn't have the energy to be mad at anybody. Like I just wow. didn't. That's a real, you beat. know, like, like if you, if you stub your toe on, a, or you bang the, the, your kneecap on a coffee table, you can mm-hmm. find something to hit. Cause it hurts, but you know, sure. all right, listen, this is just physical pain. Mm-hmm. It was just the emotional roller coaster of I'm making $260 to you owe a <laughs> hundred. Yeah. It was just, and yeah. to a lot of people out there that bet big money, they go, oh, my God. Like, uh, that's, but, man, I didn't come from money. I, I, it's all I proportional. Yeah. yeah, I, I grew it, So, uh, man, if I, it, two bucks to me is a lot. I, like, I yeah. don't, I, I still, this day, you know, I never take that stuff for granted. So mm-hmm. That's certainly a bad beat. Um, yeah, let's shift to bad. this. There's one right. thing I've always wanted to ask you since I've been following you. And correct me if I'm wrong here, but if I remember correctly, I think you're Cubs fan, Bears fan, and Celtics fan, right? Is that accurate? Yeah, that's that's how I grew up. Um, you know, when where did you, you grow up? In, grow up. Uh, I grew up in uh, California, Southern California, Thousand Oaks, California. Um, I, I still I still live in Thousand Oaks. Yeah. And the way that the way that I grew up, and and when you get into what we do, I, I tried to steer away and I try and stay away from the the fan stuff, just because yeah. I don't I don't want to give an opinion and somebody think, oh well, he's got an You're agenda because he grew. Yeah, yeah. yeah I just. And, and to me, there's nothing more fun than being brutally honest about your own team. I mm-hmm. mean, and that, that's just, to me, that's fun. Cause like, I mean, I'm also, you know, grew up a Penguins fan and I'm on this like group text with these uh, two of my buddies who are also Penguins fans. And like every time they're struggling in the postseason, those guys still have that fan in them and I'll just egg it on. Yeah. They're <laughs> done. Time to rebuild. They're done. Mm-hmm. They're finished. It's over. You know, doom and gloom. Just cause I think it's fun to do, but uh, the way that, yeah. yeah, no kidding. <laughs> the, the way that it worked is um, my dad grew up in the Midwest and he grew up in a, in a small town called Monmouth, Illinois, uh, which is the Western part of the state. And mm-hmm. I mean, it's real small town. And the only team, the story he told us, the only team that would come in on the radio because they didn't have television was the Celtics. Mm. They could listen, he could listen to Celtic games. So when he moved out to LA later on or Southern California, he continued to be a Celtic fan. Well, of course, you know, you're in Laker country. So you got to deal with all that. So mm-hmm. we all just knew the Celtics. That's, that's how we were raised is, is the Celtics. The Cubs came about because obviously he grew up in Illinois and his family had a lot of brothers and sisters. They were split between Cubs and White Sox. That was sort of the, their split. And he decided to be a Cub fan for whatever reason. I have no idea. Um, and until 2016, that was, that was a terrible idea. But um, he decided to be a Cub fan. And so we just followed along with that. And the way the Bears happened is my brother had a bear shirt and I got it as a hand-me-down when he got older mm-hmm. and I wore that effing thing probably every day I didn't even know I don't like I still remember it was like orange and it had the old school helmet and the two bar face mask 
And so because of that, I became a bear fan after that. So yeah, it's, it's, yeah. it's weird, but it's, that's how a lot of people come into, you know, why they're fans of, I agree. of certain things. And I think it's that's crazy. cool because that's a, a good way to, I've always felt it's a good way to know, like, you know, if, if you're a real fan or not, like we're, we're from new England. So we were, you know, around here, it's a lot of Celtics, Red Sox, Patriots fans, but you don't know who's a real, are you a real Patriots fans? Like the Patriots or your Patriots fans, you grew up in new England and yeah. That, that's what you do. You know what I mean? Yeah. It sounds weird, but like, I've always wanted to like move to a different part of the country and like bring that fandom with me. You know what I mean? And be the Reds, yeah. the Celtics fan in LA or something like that. You know what I mean? Cause I'm friends with, you know, Cowboys fans, Lakers fans, whatever. You have to have an actual reason to be a fan of that team. Otherwise just growing up here and being a pink hat, you know, bandwagon fan or something like that. And, so. and, and it, it's also cool to see just that, what something means to somebody somewhere else. Like mm -hmm. I, I didn't like growing up in Southern California. Um, and again, my family's from uh, my dad's side of the family's from the Midwest. Mm -hmm. um, but growing up in Southern California, I never got the whole college football thing. I just didn't get right. it. I didn't, it wasn't, it just wasn't anything that I thought, Oh man, well college football is such a big deal because we had USC and UCLA. And to be honest with you, there's just not a lot of buzz surrounding it. I mean, they, they yeah. do local shows, um, they they do a good job promoting it and things like that in the area, but it's not the same. And I remember the first time I went out to, for my first job in radio, I went to Charleston, South Carolina. And I just remember walking around the first night and I was going to have dinner at some bar. Mm -hmm. uh, they, they were like mosquitoes the size of candles. I mean, it was crazy. Like I, I just remember walking around going, this is different from anything back home because there were college flags like on every single building. Yeah. Like somebody... Clemson, South Carolina, Auburn, like SEC, ACC. And I just thought that's kind of cool. It's not like that back home. Out here, yeah. I mean, like people aren't, you know, flying their flags out in front of their business. It's just, it's not like right. that. And so I remember just being there and getting to go to a game and their excitement for it made me fall back in love with college football because I, I liked it mm -hmm. as a kid. Yeah. But I just sort of grew out of touch with it because it wasn't the same. I wasn't around that excitement all the time. And so being out there, getting to see their excitement, it made me appreciate it that much more. Yeah, that, that's one thing we definitely don't have up here. You know, New England, we have Boston College, yeah. maybe, and like University of New Hampshire, like locally. So, yeah, you know, college no. sport, thank God the Patriots are good because college sports yeah. are just, outside of hockey, it's just not a thing. I've always, yeah, that's one thing I've always said. I'd love to go to like, go to a game at Clemson or Florida state or even, you know, like awesome, Michigan man. or something like that. Yeah. It's, it's it, probably insane. Um, yeah. It's, it's awesome. The, I remember I went to, um, I just got, I still remember this. It was Thanksgiving weekend. And I remember being really, really like borderline depressed because I wasn't, I didn't have any family out there. I was all yeah. alone. I had Thanksgiving dinner at an Applebee's by myself. I think I had like, like, <laughs> A, a Bud Light and like boneless wings for Thanksgiving. Mm. And I remember my co-host was like, Hey, I'm going to go to the South Carolina Clemson game on Saturday. Why don't you come up? I was like, uh, oh, you know, and I was a little down and out and I went mm. and it was the best decision I made because mm. I got to see the atmosphere. And, and once I was there, I was like, now I get it. Now, yeah, now yeah. I see why this is so important and why it's such a big deal. So speaking of atmosphere, I want to ask you this too, real quick. Let's go back to your roots. So Cubs and Bears. What's a better experience? Saturday at Wrigley in the bleachers, just crushing beers or tailgating at Soldier Field? Oh, Wrigley. It's not even Is close. It? Yeah, it's not <laughs> I think I've heard close. you tell stories about Wrigley oh, before. God. Any we're, any good bleacher stories from Wrigley? I mean <laughs> Wrigley and the bleachers. I remember the first time I was ever at Wrigley and the bleachers, it was with my, uh, my brother and my dad and mm. some of the stuff that was chanted, um, mm. like no, nothing, nothing, you know, racial or anything like that, but some of the stuff that was chanted, if it was chanted now, people would, would be in <laughs> serious trouble. Like it was, <laughs> It felt like spring break, like a mm. spring break in, in Lake Havasu. It felt like spring break in Lake Havasu. So, so being in the bleachers that first time was fun. Um, I've done it several times, sat pretty much all over the stadium. Yeah. I can remember, I can remember one time, uh, this was probably 2000, Jesus, was it 2010? The Cubs were bad. The Cardinals were in town. I went out there for a couple of days with some buddies and it was a Saturday 
and we we got tickets pretty cheap because it was late in the season Mm -hmm. and my buddy and i were like yeah i don't feel like going into the game yet why don't we go to this game doesn't matter why don't we go across the street to murphy's so we go to murphy's bleachers across the street and just get mangled i mean (laughs) ripped and i look at him and i and i remember saying jesus it's in the fifth inning we haven't even gone in yet and we we got in there in the fifth inning yeah went and sat in the bleachers and then went straight back to murphy's afterwards and it was just from there it was just a blur but it's just that that whole and that's that's the bummer about the pandemic and the shutdown and all that stuff it is it's not just the 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 players and the coaches and and those people that are impacted then all those businesses around around oh, yeah. ballparks oh, that rely on that, all those local college towns that are now going to be screwed because yep. you know they don't have that income coming in. It's it's terrible. Yeah, it yeah. sucks. But no, it's not a good look. Speaking of college football, I mean, saw everything going on today. I mean, bigger conferences are getting canceled. You you work in the business. Do you see yeah. this falling in line a lot more? Of these, I didn't even know that's how it worked. It sounds like it's going conference by conference. It's not like yeah, the NFL where it's just like everything's canceled. Is that how it works? The, it's a conference yeah, decision. The thing? NCAA, because because there's no real leader at the top of the NCAA, there's no way to really yeah. keep it structured to where, <laughs> you know, under the same umbrella. And so yeah. I hope, my hope is the SEC and the ACC and maybe the Big 12 play. Yeah. But e- even if, you know, the, the Big 12 says no, um, and even if the uh, the ACC backs out, I still, if I had to to bet today, I I still think that the SEC is going to play football. I really mm-hmm. do, and and I think it's going to be their fu to to the rest of these conferences. I think coaches are going to use that in recruiting pitches. Yeah. Um, if a player is deciding between an SEC team and another conference, they're going to use that in recruiting, um, and I, I hope it happens because I, I think there's a lot of people that are speaking for the athletes and and what you're hearing is the majority on social media and you're not really hearing from the people who are actually putting it on the line, which is the players. And I think that's the part mm-hmm. that bothers me the most. So what are they like? What, this is going to, this is going to come off wrong, but like, so what are they playing for? Like they're not playing for a national championship, obviously. So if the sec and the ACC and like you said, say the big 12 play, is it just they play 10 games in her in her conference and this is your record? I mean that whole the the championship um I, see I don't I don't even think that the NCAA has rule over the championship I, I don't even I don't I, even know that that's the case I don't um, understand the NCAA yeah <laughs> I it's, just watch it's, it. It. <laughs> it's it's very it's very weird and there's a lot and I'm still <laughs> learning every day like more right. to it and and what mm. all goes into it but it, it's it's strange how the whole structure is done but I would assume that the SEC would have an SEC champion obviously yeah, right and then depending on who else was also playing, whether it be the ACC, whether it be uh, the Big 12, the Sun Belt, um, I think the AAC was another one. Mm. Who knows? Maybe we have a college football playoff based on those conferences that are willing to play. Yeah. I just think if I were a player in the Pac-12 and if I were a player in the Big 10 and I see all of these guys getting to go out there and play, I'm going to really question the people at the top of my conference, especially yeah, sure. when, when the Big Ten's uh, commissioner has a son who plays at Mississippi State. And I think yep. about a week ago, he was on record as saying he would be okay with his son playing this year, yet they mm-hmm. just shut down the conference. Very, very, there's a lot of hypocrisy in this whole thing. Definitely interesting. So did you have something? Yeah. My bad. Uh, I was just going to ask, cause I know you've been to, uh, bears and cubs. Have you ever been to a Celtics game? Like a Celtics home game? Yeah, I haven't. No, I've never been. Uh, my brother has been, um, and he said it was awesome. Mm-hmm. Um, but no, I've never, obviously, you know, went to, you know, the forum and Staples center out here and all that, but I've never been to, I've never been to a game in Boston. I've never been to Boston period. Never that was going to be my next question. Have you been yeah. to new England period? Mm-mm, never. No, What's well, like the most. furthest East you've come? Uh, been to Manhattan, been to, 
uh, Miami obviously lived on the East Coast and, mm-hmm. and Charleston and North Charleston, South Carolina. Um, yeah, Miami's yeah, never Miami's kind of like a less cool Boston. It's it's not that much. <laughs> yeah, very I, similar. I hear similar yeah, nightlife. Yeah, I hear that. There's a lot of similarities there. Yeah, yeah. yeah I hear that. Uh, but no, I, I would love to go. I, I love, you know, that sort of uh, scenic in the fall, you know, like mm. Vermont and those places. I'll see those. And I'm, I'm a big, uh, you know, weather nerd. So I like mm. whenever Great I'm weather. watching the weather. Yeah, whenever I'm watching the weather channel and they show the leaves changing and all that stuff, I get all geeked out for some reason. I don't know why. Um, but that's, I just, that's New that's, England in like September yeah. and, and October. Oh, it's right we'll in the alley, bro. You fucking love it. We'll send you some pictures. Yeah. Uh, listen, please do. Because I, I, like, I got to live vicariously through you guys because I can't yeah. get out there. And, and I, don't, so, I mean, who knows who, where anybody can travel at this point. No shit. Um, la- last quick thing I just thought of before we let you go. So you've been in LA. You're a Celtics fan, but you mentioned the Staples Center. What was the Kobe thing like in LA, like living in that area when that happened? Well, here's, here's what's crazy about that is – where the crash happened Uh i lived like a two minute side street drive from before i lived i lived there for a long time and then he was actually going to his facility which is in uh, newbury park Mm -hmm. but it's thousand oaks where i live so that was he was where you were trying yeah at the time that's that's where that's where i grew up yeah Yeah. so i've lived there my whole life so Kobe was always out there because he had his, his basketball Academy Uh is a freeway drive four minutes from my house. Yeah. I mean, it's, 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 so it's right there. So they were basically trying to follow the one-on-one freeway and going up North and the, and the way that it works. So people have, have a better understanding, Mm -hmm. you know, the Cowboys have training camp in Oxnard, right? Mm -hmm. So Oxnard, California. So how it works is if you're just looking straight ahead at a freeway, um, where the crash happened was in Calabasas slash Agora Hills. And then it goes to Westlake, Thousand Oaks. Then you get uh, Newbury Park, Ox, Camarillo, and then Oxnard. And that's how it works. And so you just go in succession. And from where the crash happened to his academy, it's probably a 15-minute drive so they were right there in a helicopter. I mean, yeah. they were right there. And so when you, when you see the news, and it's also the day that I'm flying out to Miami to go do the Super Bowl, mm. I mean, it was, it just, and I can remember getting up that morning actually before the crash happened, and it was really foggy out. I mean, really yeah. foggy I remember out. those pictures. It was fucking crazy. Yeah. And so I remember looking out the window and going, oh, it's really foggy out. And it gets worse where that is because you kind of take a dip. Mm -hmm. And so at certain times of the year, I remember coming back from work um, in Sherman Oaks, California. It's about a 20, 25 minute drive. And in the middle of the night when I would be driving back, there were certain times of the year where I would have to slow down to about 30 miles an hour on the freeway because I couldn't see what was in front of me. Mm -hmm. The fog gets that thick there. And the fact that they were trying to fly and then you see and hear some of the, you know, stuff about, you know, were they going up? Was he disoriented? Were they going down? It was crazy. People were just shocked. You don't, you don't, you don't think something like that could happen. We got to the, in the airport that night, that was bizarre. It was on at every, every TV, at every restaurant, every bar, people were just, it was just one of those reality checks. Just one of those, oof. Like this is, it, it, it's almost, it almost, it's scary. You know, it's, it's not a, mm-hmm. uh, and the way that I put it is it wasn't, I, I don't know if it was so much sadness that people were feeling. I think people were just scared because yeah, unless you've dealt with death or dealt with death in your personal life, you don't get how final it is until it happens. And mm-hmm. then you realize, oh, so that's just it. That's, yeah. there, there, there is no more. And I think a lot of people who had maybe never dealt with that all of a sudden had to, and it was one of the more popular athletes in LA history. I mean, mm-hmm. look, people, they have, they're okay with LeBron. They mm-hmm. like LeBron. They hope the Lakers do well. They worship Kobe. Like they mm-hmm. worship that guy. And it's a shame, man. It's terrible. There yeah, was a I video remember- that came out. Go ahead. There, there's a video that came out. Um, it was from either the night before or two nights before. I don't know if you saw this, Jonas. It was him and his daughter 
uh, walking through a mall somewhere in, you know, is near LA or near where he mm-hmm. lived in, uh, is Newport beach, right? Where he lives. Yeah. Yeah. Newport beach is, uh, orange County. Um, and so that's, I mean, to drive there is a, just a pain in the ass because of the traffic, but yeah, that's, that's where he lived, but that's why he would take a helicopter because it was just quicker than having to deal with traffic. Well, it was just crazy because of the, the level of stardom that he had. It's, it's one thing to be so famous that people are just, you know, they treat you like a rock star where, um, everyone's crowding around you wherever you go, but he was, him and his daughter were walking through a food court and people definitely recognized that it was him. And this video was taken by someone who was just eating there. Um, but people completely left him alone. And it's like Kobe had reached the next stratosphere where he was so beloved that he was like actually given his space and respected Mm -hmm. where people were like, nah, that that's Kobe. Like we'll, we'll let him be (laughs) like, so he was just peacefully walking through this food court. People left him alone. They like walked by him. I think he may have said hi or something, but it was pretty cool and, and surreal and then made it like even sadder. Yeah. And I think also part of that was he was with his daughter and maybe yeah, they wanted yeah. to respect his time that he was with his daughter, but yeah, yeah. it's, um, yeah, that, that still is. And the fact that that happened, you know, in January, it's only been, you know, less than seven months. It feels Seems like, like it five was, years ago. Yeah. Jesus it's crazy Christ. just because right. everything that's stuff. happened. And I forgot yeah. that was, that was, that was the Sunday before the Super Bowl. I'm pretty sure. Yeah. Like the week before, yeah. you know what I mean? Which is crazy, yeah. but Fly, flying out that night, it was crazy, man. Very depressing. Wild. Um, but cool, man. No, I know. I know we're coming up on time. Um, before we let you go, Jonas, th- thanks again, man, for coming on. Um, no, thanks for having me, guys. I, I, I want to make sure. I wish I, I wish I could do it uh, longer. I wish. I oh, could all good. More time with you guys. We'll, we'll have you on again sometime, maybe once the seasons cool. get going. Um, but before we let you go, where's the best place for people to find you on on social media and everything if they want to keep following you? I mean, I don't hardly go on uh, on Instagram at all. Um, mm-hmm. I, I try and I'm, I'm not big on social media. I do Twitter because I You're have a great to, Twitter follow. Just, uh, it's listen, people. <laughs> people mostly just retweeting reason, trolls but it, oh yeah I, I just i don't care like, <laughs> those are somebody so good says some yeah somebody like insults me on twitter i go okay like what, what are you yeah. like i don't like I, you you think i'm gay okay right. all right that's that's fine okay think well I'm let gay. me ask you real quick like, so once fine. they they do that they say something fucking stupid you retweet it are they immediately yeah. either in your dms or the comments like oh thanks for responding bro big fan like blah 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 <laughs> No, I, I've only gotten a few of those to where yeah. I, I had like, <laughs> like some crazy, some crazy ones, but like, I don't, people have, and even Brady Quinn has, has accused me and there's been people at work that have said, oh, those are your burner accounts. And I was like, okay, go <laughs> investigate it. T- tell me those are my burner accounts. You sound like a guy who has but time I, to do fucking burner accounts. <laughs> and, and then, and then they, and then they will say, uh, well, you know, those are bots. Those are just auto generated accounts. But what's weird about them is it they know exactly what I'm talking about like they, oh, yeah. and they re, they reference it they know my opinions on things and they mm-hmm. reference it and so i i honestly think maybe it's one or two guys with a bunch of fake accounts that just mm. that just have a vendetta I, man yeah but i don't i mean i don't care as long as it's, it's not us you know, it's not uh, it's like, not us it, it, if it is, that's certified, fine too. not I, us. Yeah, I, I don't, I never get offended by it. I just, I, I think it's funny, and so I, I retweet yeah. them because I, I don't, I don't care. I, I don't, I try not to take myself too seriously, especially yeah. on Twitter. And I told somebody, I said, look, uh, Twitter is pro wrestling. That's all it is. Like it's, <laughs> it's like, it's like, a like, wild, wild it's, west. Yeah, it just it, crazy stuff happens. People yeah. go on there, and if you, and if you really, really want to be upset you can find something on Twitter to be upset about. I'd rather yeah. not let it exhaust my energy. And I just would rather do what I do. And if somebody doesn't like it, they don't like it. I had some guy tweet me earlier and said something along the lines of uh, big fan. But after what you said yesterday, it was nauseating. And I said, <laughs> okay, yeah, I don't think like, what, what, what am I, what am I supposed to do with that? All right. That's right. fine. Like you, you don't like me. You don't like me. I don't, I don't right. care. We're, really we're going to turn it around. We're going to turn it around. And uh, as this show gets more and more followers, we're going to make you Mr. Unlimited. That's going to be your <laughs> nickname that people yeah. are going to, that's all that they're going to associate with you with. I mean, so get and, your video ready. And, and if I, and if, uh, does that mean, uh, so I've got to have my wife cheering me on in the background, like Russell Wilson. I mean, yeah. look, I love, I it. love Russ. I absolutely love Russell Wilson. Mm-hmm. I'm, I think I saw that that was like an, a really old video and he was trying to be funny, but nonetheless, it was, uh, it was a little it's odd. Not as old as you think. Strange. It was like from yeah. two weeks ago. <laughs> 
<laughs> somebody, so I heard it was, I heard it was a couple of years ago. Somebody said, Oh, that was from two years Unless ago. Unless it resurfaced, something. but I yeah, don't think I, so. Yeah. I don't, I, I don't know. I don't know, but it, yeah, I, it was, I understand it Russell strange. Wilson about as good as I understand the NCAA. He's a mind <laughs> yeah, puzzle of a yeah, elite level yeah. athlete. Um, Damn but no, I, I was just going to say, I mean, not for, it sounds stupid, but it's like one of our first things like, oh, this is kind of cool. Getting some traction with the show is some random kid on Twitter said, your podcast is ass. And I was like, oh, that's kind of mean. But I was like, this is kind of dope. Like someone's <laughs> taking their time to talk about our show. I retweeted I mean, it. I said, thanks for listening. And he's people, a big fan pe- now. <laughs> yeah. People are going to, people are going to get pissed and they're going to, they're going to criticize you and they're going to, yeah, yeah. they're going to insult you and it makes them feel totally. better and mm-hmm. and you can either let it let it really mean something to you or you can just say okay but move yeah. on it's i, I actually i printed it out and i just taped it above my door so every morning Good. i just get up tap it yeah play like take care of my family yep, yep. get my work it out and it's, it's my play That's like a champion it. today rule 76 yeah, yeah. <laughs> all right That's brother amazing. uh the jonas awesome. Knox on twitter make sure you follow him. we'll put all this in the show notes as well but uh cool Thank you again, man. Let you get back to your night. Thanks, guys. And, uh, we'd love to have you again soon. Appreciate it. Awesome. Right, Thank you for having me. It's an honor. Thanks, guys. Thanks, bud. See you, Jonas. Bye. Take care.